Hello, my name is Wolfram Burgert. I'm from the University of Freiburg. It's my pleasure today to talk about how to give a presentation. And uh, I'm happy to share this content uh, with you. With every presentation that you give, you actually present yourself and your work, and it's therefore definitely worth considering uh, to optimize it. This talk will be about um, two aspects, mainly the slides, uh, the, uh, the styles that you should actually consider. Uh, it will also be about content, and then I will also talk a little bit about how to actually act during the presentation. The slides are typically done long before you get the presentation, and long enough to practice. Even I, when I give a presentation nowadays, as one of the more experienced people in our community, practice my talk and I also practice this presentation and the slides are used to better convey the message and not so much uh, to allow you to read off what you want to say. This is slightly different with these slides that I give here because it's, it's part of a lecture and uh, when you give a lecture then your slides should um, be somewhat self-contained so that uh, people can actually understand it even without you um, talking to it or them. Many scientific presentations actually have similar outlines, as so as papers do have as well. Uh, they start with an introduction and a motivation. They do present the state of the art. Um, they present your approach or their, the author's approach. They present the results and they um, provide conclusions and the discussion of future work. Um, and because such a table of contents appears in virtually every presentation, particularly when your presentation is short and you need to save time, I might consider uh, uh, omitting something like this. Let's go to the introduction and the motivation. So what you need to convey there is basically to state the problem and uh, describe why it is relevant, what the open question is, and in which way your approach provides an answer to this question. In short, right, you want um, to provide a message to the audience why it should care about your work. If you want to discuss the state of the art, then what you do want to do is you want to mention relevant approaches presented in the past. And you should actually tell in which way your approach presented in your paper goes beyond uh, the previous ones. That is not always easy simply because you somehow have to speak about the limitations of previous work. So um, be negative about previous work. At the very same time, you want to also be uh, inclusive and basically present other people's work, which uh, might uh, make them happy. The former part might make them unhappy and you need to find the right balance there. When it comes to your approach, then uh, the, the goal is not to present to the audience uh, that you have skills, not necessarily. Uh, so what you actually want to do uh, is you want to let the audience understand your work and uh, also understand what is so innovative and great about it. So what you need to do is you need to provide the audience with the technical details, but equally important is the intu intuition behind your approach. And I usually prefer graphics and or examples to explain the technical details and the intuition. Come back to this in a minute. For example here, this might be an algorithm, or this is an algorithm that uh, actually is from, from one of my papers, explaining such an algorithm as it is here to the audience will be extremely difficult. And it's very unlikely that uh, the majority of the audience will grasp the idea behind this algorithm. So it's way better to describe the idea, like give examples uh, to describe how it works, design the examples in a way that they cover the relevant features of the algorithm and to provide the audience in this way with the intuition behind the algorithm. If you can in the end then come back and briefly explain how the algorithm works given all these examples that is fine um, but in, in principle I prefer being able to understand what is being presented rather than left out simply because uh, it is too complicated. 
the results section should actually back up your claims. They should demonstrate that your approach has the desired features that you mentioned in the very beginning. And they should definitely also demonstrate that your paper is an advancement over the state of the art and that it is better than previous ones and in which way it is. The conclusions um, typically are designed to summarize the contribution of the paper again um, and it should also um, provide again uh, the key ideas of the work. And it is also an opportunity to, in the very end, to speak about potential limitations and um, potential future work that might be done to even further improve upon your work. Let's talk a little bit about outline um, and, and layout. So it's typically recommended to use so-called sans serif fonts um, instead of serif fonts. Serif fonts are fonts that actually have lines at the very bottom of every vertical line or horizontal lines at the very bottom of every uh, vertical line in order to guide the eyes while reading. They were designed for newspapers and dense text and because the slides shouldn't contain dense text, uh, it is not needed to actually use uh, serif fonts. Also, I prefer uh, dark text on light background um, and uh, also left aligned text instead of center text and avoid putting too much uh, on one slide like on this one over here. This is a Times New Roman uh, slide, version of that slide with the serif font and here you can basically see the uh, individual guiding line, the, the lines guiding the eyes and for uh, the short text that we typically have on slides that's actually not needed. Here is an example of uh, white text on dark background. Uh, so colors need to be very, very carefully chosen. As you can also see and on this slide, uh, and it's often recommended to actually check the readability and maybe ask others uh, as to whether they can uh, read the slides because different people have different perception of colors and particularly red and green are often hard to tell apart for many people and this is uh, why it is difficult or it's not recommended to have for example red and green lines even intersecting ones in graphs for example. Text sites make sure that everyone can read the text um, and um, my recommendation is to actually look at the room beforehand or try ask for the, the dimensions of the room in order to understand how far people sit away and also ask about the size of the projection so that you can actually understand what the minimum font size is uh, that, that you can um, use, making sure that everyone can read this. So, uh, so the smallest uh, size letters that everyone can read. And uh, that is relatively important. It doesn't make sense to have uh, text on the slide that cannot be read by, by people in the audience. Abbreviations is another and a topic that I often um, experience. While abbreviations like SLAM might get much easier to or faster to talk about things like instead of saying simultaneous localization and mapping always, um, but you can also overdo it. And uh, people are people who are not in a particular area. For them, it is extremely hard to understand the the all the abbreviations in a text. So. My general recommendation is if it is not super, super uh, common, if the abbreviation, then basically don't use it. Um, they might feel you like being an insider, while they might uh, likely make a larger fraction of the audience feeling like an outsider. So um, my recommendation is um, don't use uh, abbrevi abbreviations unless they are very, very common, and in particular, you don't use uncommon ones in titles. Figures, uh, that's also um, that's surprising you often. My recommendation is to prefer vector graphics over images and pixeled um, images. When grabbing an image from a sort of source paper or a source paper, make sure that you do this at the highest possible resolution. And uh, when you can't see the individual pixels on your computer screen or the LCD screen, then consider re doing that picture. Uh, so here's an example of a low resolution picture where you can actually see the individual pixels from that screen grab um, on in your presentation. Uh, and if you go for a high resolution one, 
then uh, it looks actually much nicer. So the second question is also to, to how to um, do plots. And here's a, also a plot from one of my uh, previous papers. And um, what you can see here, first of all, is that colors uh, help a lot. Uh, it's ambiguating between individual curves. Although even here, we do have the problem that this greenish one and the black one are hard to tell apart. So, uh, but so the advantage here is that they are ordered in a way they are plotted as well, so that you can easily make that association. So take every effort to avoid ambiguities in, in your uh, in your graphics, and we'll just have to mention one of those. Animations um, typically animations can be useful uh, for explaining content and also for illustrating processes. Um, animations are not made to entertain the audience, um, or they can even sometimes distract the, the, the audience. And uh, I'm also not a fan of uh, line by line text any animations. Um, generally avoid demonstrating that you know every feature of your presentation too, and uh, don't overdo it with uh, animations. Spell checking, yes, so this is something uh, that I also keep observing. Um, in fact, your computer can do spell checking for you. Use it. And um, usually it uh, underlines um, the wrong words with red lines and um, telling you that this word might be potentially uh, wrong. And um, the precondition for this is that the language of the slide needs to be the language that you are using. And then the slide spell checker can do uh, a, a proper job. And, uh, and here you actually, it cannot do like detect all failures, but uh, modern ones are a little bit better to actually also check grammar, but uh, I at least do this. It's not a sufficient condition that uh, your presentation is free of errors. Slide numbers, they do help orienting yourself and also when there should be questions help uh, the audience to uh, we've referred to specific slides, particularly when it comes to questions. Um, they have sometimes a little bit disadvantages when you have animations or hidden slides. Um, so um, that is um, that is a disadvantage of slide numbers. I'm um, not always using them when it comes to short, when, when it's about short presentations for longer presentations, it definitely makes sense. Um, important aspects to check uh, before. First of all, set the language of the slides to the language of the presentation. If it's English, it is English. Um, and if it's a German or your uh, mother uh, language, then use that language. Spell your slides, press F7. Right? It's in many tools the, the key for starting the spell check process. Um, then first of all, uh, uh, even more important, check whether your videos run on the computer used for the presentation. And um, when this computer is attached to an LCD screen, then also check as to whether the, the videos run on the LCD screen, and maybe also on your computer in order to make sure that uh, you do not get confused during the presentation. Unfortunately, nowadays, projectors have different uh, projection formats. There are 4 to 3, 6 to 9, and uh, several others. Uh, if you, uh, that needs to be checked, and um, you should actually also figure that out before your presentation to actually choose the right layout of your slides. Changing it on the fly or minutes before your presentation might lead to problems uh, regarding formatting. And uh, if you present on a TV set, for example, during a poster session, uh, fonts can easily be too small. So this also needs to be checked before. Regarding your presentation itself, so the, my biggest advice is, is plan it, practice it, time it. And also make uh, get familiarized with the fact that people might interrupt you with questions, and uh, particularly also uh, practice transitions between slides. Um, keep in mind this is your show, and optimize it. That's uh, what you should do. In fact, uh, I like this uh, PhD comic over here that uh, presentations can go wrong, and uh, this is something that you should be aware of and uh, keep your eye on the clock and uh, try at least to get the major messages across to the audience. And, and in case there should be too many 
uh, disruptions by questions or whatsoever, and you maybe need to ask for um, postponing them after your presentation. Connecting your laptop, uh, that is something that, is, uh, that I typically encounter. Um, check beforehand as to whether your laptop works in the, in, in the setting. Um, so what I typically do is I go to the um, presentation uh, system the day before and check as to whether um, my slides are visible, the colors are okay, uh, the videos run on both screens, what I mentioned already before. Um, so that's what, what I typically do. Um, I also avoid booting my computer in front of the audience and I run through the entire presentation to check as to whether everything is okay. In, in particular, if people ask you to give a presentation, uh, to, to put your presentation on a presentation computer, that is um, a major problem and that needs to be carefully checked. I also typically use the, the presentation mode, which is something that uh, looks like this over here in the tool that I'm using. Um, the presentation mode has a couple of advantages. It allows you to put something into the notes that is not on the slide, but that you want to convey anyhow. Um, it uh, has a clock in the, in the top left and uh, in the bottom right in order to actually see as to whether your timing is correct. And because it can already read what is on the, on the next slide, it helps you to make a proper uh, transition. So uh, the only problem with that is that you need to actually um, position yourself uh, relative to the computer in a way that you can actually see that uh, presentation tool. And the other disadvantage is that the, the screens are often too so very small in order to um, have that uh, presented uh, to, to be visible enough. But this is something that you need to figure out. The laser pointer uh, is also something interesting. Um, it should be used to point at important aspects that you want to explain and or emphasize. Um, if the laser point jitters on the screen, then what you should do is you should actually take the laser pointer into both hands that substantially reduces jitter. Never point at the audience uh, and also fam familiarize you yourself with the, with the individual buttons uh, not to jump to the end instead of starting the, uh, the light or um, advancing uh, the slides instead of using the pointer. So these are all kinds of mistakes that might happen during the talk. Practicing there is important as well. Speaking. One important aspect is that you speak up, that everyone can hear you. If, and if there's a microphone, you need to speak into it. It is there for you to, uh, to, to be audible by the, by the audience. Do not lower your voice simply because there's a microphone. And, uh, get familiar with the fact that you can hear your voice through the speakers and only if you, you hear yourself and also the audience hears yourself. So that's something that particularly young people need to get to. Avoid dialect and idioms uh, and avoid quotations that are not publicly known and also avoid repetitions. Maybe if you realize that you keep using the very same word over and over, look for alternatives or synonyms. And, um, Avoid also hesitation balls like a um, well, yes. Some people finish every slide with okay, okay. Make sure that you can be seen. So position yourself on the stage um, that you that people can actually see you. Try to avoid standing behind a podium where people can only see your head. And uh, so try to be more visible then by yourself, you should actually try to establish contact to the audience. Do not focus the computer screen. Do not look at the ground or into a corner. Um, also, don't turn around and look at your at the presentation screen. So you should actually try to uh, have a setup where you can actually point to things on your screen without the need of, of turning around. Uh, do not hide yourself in, behind the lectern. Uh, do not stare at the screen. And you know, simply read off the slides and uh, also don't put your hands into your pockets. Drinking, that's also something that I've always asked myself. Uh, do you really need to drink water every 10 to 20 minutes? So uh, I think um, I can easily survive without that. And uh, if you think that it's going to be too hard for you, uh, then have a glass of water ready. Um, some people find that. Um, impolite if people drink out of the bottle. So the set is also an issue to be considered. 
how to dress. Uh, yeah, first of all, it is definitely not the most important aspect of your presentation, but with your the way you dress, you also send a message um, to the audience uh, that you actually care about them. My experience is that it is easier or more comfortable to feel overdressed rather than underdressed. Um, and uh, in, if you really are uncertain what to dress, then ask your advisor. Questions and interruptions. So uh, first of all, the most important thing is uh, think positive. People um, are um, expecting, uh, or oh, people want to interact with you. And the questions show that people are interested in your work. The worst case actually is if no one asks the question. Right? Um, and, and if there's a large audience, and particularly when there's a microphone that you are using, be aware of the fact that when someone asks a question that not everyone can hear it. So it makes sense to, in such cases, in such settings, to repeat the question. If you cannot answer a question that is also completely fine, be honest about it, and maybe postpone it after uh, the talk. And um, same with when uh, um, it would, it, answering a question would be too long. Um, and also, like, do not worry if someone in the audience falls asleep. We all travel usually from far away to conferences and easily can encounter a jet lag and get really tired, even when this is, there's an interesting talk. So as a summary, a talk is a unique opportunity to present yourself and your work. Uh, therefore, you should prepare it carefully, practice it extensively, avoid being late with your presentation, and uh, avoid not being prepared. I hope that was useful, and uh, thank you for your attention.